But let's start with, with just a basic primer on what quantum dots are mm -hmm. and, and why they are so applicable to uh, TVs and displays. Yeah. So, sure, I'm happy to talk about that. So, quantum dots are basically semiconductor material. They're compound semiconductors, but it doesn't matter that there are more than one element in them. Let's just take silicon for, for a moment. It doesn't matter whether you have a brick of silicon or a wafer that's large or small. Silicon always has the same properties until you get it to be the, the piece of silicon that you're studying is so small, it's on the order of the size of an atom and, or you know groups of atoms. Then the properties mm -hmm. change. They become quantized. And that happens for silicon, that happens for any other semiconductor material. And that's the property that quantum dots use in creating their very unique optical properties. We make them small, but we make them all uniformly sized. And then they have the same property. They emit light at a very particular color. That's what we're well, taking advantage of. Let's take a look at graphic number one to sort of show the size scale that we're talking about. Yeah, and you can see, I like to think of quantum dots as being about the size of a protein, which is a large molecule, but it's a molecule. It's not any bigger than that. And mm -hmm. you can see on this the scale, which is, these are decades or factors of 10 differences between each entry there. And you can see otherwise, that- Otherwise known as a logarithmic scale. Correct. Yeah, and you can see that it's bigger than like a water molecule, for instance, but it's smaller than molecules like DNA or or- or entities like viruses. So they're very, very small. And the, the, the interesting thing about quantum dots is the optical properties depend on exactly what size they are. So in the picture, in this graphic, you see two different sizes of quantum dots. Those will have different optical properties. The larger ones, for instance, if they emit visible light, will emit red light, very discrete red light. The smaller ones will emit blue light or some a higher energy wavelength like blue or green. Or and green so you, or something like that. Correct. And so you can make these whatever size you want. You can carefully control the size and thus carefully control the color. That's what you need in a display is very carefully defined colors. Right. And uh, we see in, in number two, graphic number two, we'll be able to see a little bit about, about what that means. So yeah, tell so us a what, little bit more about what we're seeing here. Yeah. So what we've been doing for the last decade or so is figuring out the best way to make quantum dots such that they're very uniformly, uh, uh, very uniform in size. So you can see that across moving from left to right, you see that the quantum dots are varying in size from say one nanometer up to three nanometers. It's really important that if you're making one nanometer particles and you want them to emit blue light, say at 500 nanometers, that they're all one one nanometer in size. There are no 1.5 nanometer particles mixed in with it. Well, that technology is really well developed now. And so you can make very discrete blue or bluish green or green or yellow or so forth uh, mm -hmm. particles. And that's what we're using in the QDEF film is mixtures of different colors of these to create the color primaries that are needed to give really high definition color. Mm -hmm. uh, Chumley and Emily the Strange in the chat room are both asking the same question. These are called quantum dots. Do they really have something specific to do with quantum physics? Yes, absolutely. The, the reason that the properties are different for those different sized particles is a direct consequence of quantum mechanics. Uh, because the energy of the excited state, which is what is what has occurred when a quantum dot absorbs light, is is different in energy because of the size of the particle. That's quantum physics. If the particle is larger, it doesn't matter whether, you know, you have, as I mentioned earlier, whether you have a large wafer or a small wafer of silicon, it has the same properties. It's only in this quantized size regime where the color actually changes and hmm. the energies change. Um, <clears throat> so one of the questions that, that arises out of that for me is how efficient are they I mean, you, in the last diagram, number two, we saw that basically blue light comes in in each case. Mm -hmm. and, and this is kind of an important point. I want to make sure we understand. You send blue light, it, it reaches the quantum dot. The quantum dot absorbs it, I assume, some number mm -hmm. of photons, right. and then emits another photon or more at a different wavelength. And, and my question is, how efficient is that transformation? There's got to be some loss of energy. 
There is. There are two losses. One is the loss of energy that, that that's just gone. And uh, some, some fraction of the light is just not re-emitted. And that's very small. So the typical quantum efficiencies for the quantum dots are over 90%. So most of wow. every photon that's emitted is re-emitted for the most part. Mm -hmm. But then there's also an energy loss. So blue light is more energetic than red or green light, for instance. And so there's exactly. also some thermal loss that occurs with every photon that's absorbed and re-emitted. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty uh, small. And, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And so what I was going to say is, and, and that's it's really important to understand that the uh, the this has implications, What that diagram has implications for the construction of the television. So instead of a white backlight, with uh, QDEF, you're using a blue light because you're trying to excite all the different colors of quantum dots, you know, equally. And so the blue light excites both red and green quantum dots to to give you uh, then a triluminous uh, backlight, which the, some of the blue light comes through the QDEF sheet. Some of it's emitted as green light. Some of it's emitted as red light. Mm -hmm. Is it only Is blue light that will stimulate the quantum dots to emit whatever mm -hmm. wavelength? Or, or can it be other colors? Could could be other colors, but it has to be higher energy. And so if you remember the electromagnetic, <sighs> electromagnetic spectrum, the blue is the highest energy visible light. Well, violet is more is is more ener has higher energy. But anything yeah. higher than the emitted light can be can be used to excite quantum dots. Got it. Got it. Uh, so Londog, just let let's just make sure this is very clear. He asks in the chat room. So the size of the quantum dot determines its color. That is correct. Yeah, and the range for typical quantum dots is somewhere between one and six nanometers. So they're very, very small, even the large ones. Mm -hmm. Beatmaster is asking, how durable is quantum dot? Are are these quantum dots? What is their expected lifetime lifespan? Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, you know, early days, um, it it they're interesting constructs. The Quantum dots are core shell materials, so they're one semiconductor material with another one on the uh, surrounding it, basically. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't plan to get into this, but that's what really has afforded the stability and the optical properties that people expect out of these materials. Uh, I can tell you that uh, you know display makers expect uh, 30,000 hours actual lifetime without you know perceptible change in the emission, and uh, quantum dots easily uh, meet that requirement.